Hey, what's up, guys? Benny here. And in this Call of Duty Warzone video, we're going to be ranking the best guns for mid to long range from worst to best. This will help you decide which weapons to have in your loadout and why, as well as give you an opportunity to use a variety of different weapons whilst knowing you're staying on top of the meta. Because let's face it, the recent changes to the AMAX and the Cold War optics have really started to mix things up. And I want to make sure that you're geared the best you possibly can be when you get onto Warzone. Oh, and also if you're new around here, please take a second to hit the subscribe button as 70% of you watching are not so subscribe to the channel and you'll get better at warzone i promise so in seventh place we have probably the most used assault rifle in warzone history this sat alongside the modern warfare mp5 at the top of the meta for a long long time and it is of course the kilo now what's great about the kilo is it is one of the easiest assault rifles to use in the entire game there is virtually no recoil especially if you know how to handle it and that is very much true today, though it did lose a bit of its stopping power at a distance as it had a third damage range added, which kicks in over 86 meters with the build that I'm going to give you, which really drops your time to kill by a significant amount. Now, the Kilo actually shares the same damage profile as a bunch of the other Modern Warfare assault rifles, with 42 damage for a headshot and then 28 everywhere else. Its second damage profile deals 34 to the head and 23 to the body, which then plummets to 27 and 18, which makes it feel like a pea shooter at a distance. Though its incredible ease of use still makes it very viable in today's meta, especially with the time to kill of every weapon being raised a little bit, and with a fire rate of 751 rounds per minute, and needing between 9 to 11 shots to the body to take an opponent down, this is a gun you should definitely be using if you struggle to control the recoil of some of the other assault rifles. So, this is the loadout that you want to be using. So, the first attachment that you've got to have on the Kilo is that monolithic suppressor. This goes on every Modern Warfare assault rifle, increases your damage range, and also gives you sound suppression so you stay off radar. But that damage range is really important with the Kilo because you want to make sure that you don't get that final damage profile at the furthest distance. So, you want to be hitting that 86 meters to get the fastest time to kill possible. It's the reason you go for the Syngard 19.8 Prowler barrel as well, the Commando foregrip, the 60 round mag, and then the VLK 3x optic. This is a great all-round uh, kilo build that you definitely want to give a go, and it's so easy to use, so give it a chance. Next, in sixth place for the best mid to long range weapons in Warzone, we have the Krig. This, in my eyes, is the Cold War Kilo. It's very easy to control and use, but unlike the Kilo, only has two damage profiles. Its first will deal 45 damage for a headshot, then 33 to the chest and 30 to the extremities. Then at distances beyond 41 meters, that will then drop to 38 damage for a headshot, 28 to the chest and 25 to the extremities. Now, one of the flaws with the Krig is that it doesn't have a barrel that will increase your bullet velocity and effective damage range, but you need that increased bullet velocity to land your shot consistently at those mid-range distances. But that means you don't always get that top tier damage profile, which is what stops the Krig being a top tier meta weapon, in my opinion. Though with the new optics, it's super easy to use and control, plus has one of the best blueprints in the entire game, in my opinion. It's definitely far more viable now than before the AMAX nerf and optic buff, and this is the class setup that you're going to want to use with it. So for the Krig, we start off with that agency suppressor. And because it's a mid to long range gun, we go for the agency rather than the regular suppressor. For short range weapons out of Cold War, you want to have the basic suppressor most of the time. There are some exceptions, however. But on this build, we go for the agency suppressor. Now, the difficulty is the barrel choice. Now, that 19.7 is the one I go for, partially because you get the dragon's head from it. And there isn't a barrel that does bullet velocity and increased damage range. So the range of barrel for me is the best one to have on the Krig. Uh, you then have the field agent grip to control the recoil a little bit more as you can land those shots at those further distances. The base 45 round mag and then the actual arms three times which gives you that new T-pose reticle which looks incredible uh, on the Cold War weapons. Then in fifth place we have the Farah, a weapon that Raven have even said themselves that they're still not exactly sure where they see it fitting in the game's meta. 
but its recent changes, most noticeably to its recoil pattern and the Cold War optic changes, have made it a pretty great choice for medium to long range with one of the fastest time to kills possible out there. It's got a high damage profile for an assault rifle with a rate of fire of 790 rounds per minute, with 40 damage for a headshot and then 31 everywhere else, with that dropping to 35 and 26 in its second damage range. But from my experience using the Farah, it's now a lot easier to use and can also work well up close as well, which sort of reminds me of the Ram from the Modern Warfare guns. Its high rate of fire allows it to shred up close as a last resort, making the Farah a great weapon to pair with a sniper depending on your playstyle. But let's check out the class setup that I'd personally recommend. So to kick off with the Farah, you're going to have that Gru Suppressor. Pretty much goes on every mid to long range weapon because you want to have the highest effective damage range possible as well as the highest bullet velocity. And the Gru Suppressor does exactly that. Now, the barrel that I go for with the Farah is the Liberator for increased bullet velocity. This just means that I know at those further distances, I'm going to be able to land those shots because I don't have to necessarily guess to some extent of where I need to fire to hit my target and gauge their movement. I can just kind of lock onto them, take full advantage of the games and build aim assist and just kind of spray and burst, which is very easy to do with the Farah now, especially once you get used to that new recoil pattern. Then I go for the Spetnaz Grip on here which is the horizontal and vertical recoil one you want to reduce the recoil for your mid to long range weapons as much as possible some are easier to control like the kilo the farah can kick a little bit because it kind of goes to the right and then to the left as well um so you want to have full control over that i then use the 60 round mag and then i use the actual arms three times the royal uh, royal and cross four times is very much like the vlk from the modern warfare weapons personally i just love that t-pose reticle on the actual and in my gameplay that's what i was using but give this a go because it is really good at short range as well so it can get you out of a lot of tricky situations and pairs perfectly with a sniper in fourth place we have an assault rifle which i now think is one of the most versatile weapons in the entire game depending on how you decide to build it and that is the cold war ak-47 now, the AK-47 is one of the best close-range weapons in the game if you use the high mobility build. But with this new class setup, it almost replaces the AMAX as the hard-hitting mid-range assault rifle. It's got a slower fire rate compared to most other assault rifles at 600 rounds per minute, but also hits for 58 damage for a headshot, 43 to the chest, and 36 everywhere else. That does drop down to 51, 38, and 32 at further distances, but still allows you to get a five bullet kill on a fully plated opponent at any range, which is insane. The recoil with the new optics is also definitely manageable, though remember, it's even easier if you're playing on 120 FOV with affected field of view because you just don't get anywhere near as much visual recoil, so your aim assist will stay locked on to the chest. But this is the class setup that you want to be using. So, the mid to long range AK-47. We all know that this thing is an absolute beast at close range. And it is a little bit harder to use at a distance. But once you get the hang of it, it can drop people so quickly. Uh, and for me, it's a bit like the Farah and the perfect pairing um, to a sniper. So, the muzzle, you start off with a groove suppressor. We then go for that 20-inch Betnaz RPK barrel because it's effective damage range, bullet velocity, and also strafe speed. And that can surprisingly help you win a lot of gunfights uh, for the cost of vertical and horizontal recoil but as i said with the new optics it's very manageable um, as you saw in my gameplay then i've got the spetnaz grip to control the recoil the 45 round mag so i don't punish my ads speed uh, and then we have that actual arms three times that t-pose reticle uh, and also how sick does the curse angel blueprint look by the way i just love the reactive camos but this is the ak-47 that you want to be using for mid to long range let me know how you find it Next, in third place, we've got to have what I think is the best sniper in Warzone, hands down. Now, I know loads of the Cold War snipers have received a ton of buffs recently, like the Swiss, which is now also a really solid sniper for aggressive gameplay, but is still not meta in my opinion. Though, of course, it all depends on your gameplay, but the Car 98K is still insane and is definitely worthy of being in the top three for best mid to long range options in Warzone. And one of the reasons for that is its ease of use and the fact that it also takes full advantage of having that Modern Warfare aim assist. 
The car also has a really fast ADS, which is what makes it perfect for pushing multiple opponents as you can get your shot off and then move, which is one of the reasons it's the go-to sniper for most top players in the game. So let's check out the class that you want to be using for the car 98. So as always, we start off with that monolithic suppressor. And I do miss saying monolithic suppressor. The agency and sound suppressor just don't sound as good. Uh, we then have the Syngard Custom 27.6 barrel. So you have the highest effective damage range possible. The TAC laser is going to make sure that you've got the fastest aim down sight speed. But more importantly for me, with the car 98 k is the aiming stability. This is a, um, a perk that most people actually overlook with a lot of weapons. But it means that when you go to ADS, it's going to be bang set. Center, uh, so you can get your shot off nice and quickly and make sure you're landing your shots in the fastest time possible. Uh, I then go ahead and use the base sniper scope optic. And then the same reason I use the precision comb stock is for that aiming stability. Uh, some people used to run the sport comb for faster ADS, but the car 98 actually has a fast enough ADS anyway. So that, if that aiming stability attachment is just going to mean you lock straight in. And also something I recommend you do with all your weapons, to be honest, that we've checked out in this video, check out your reticle, make sure you've got the one that suits you best. I personally use the pinpoint, though I think the cover shot one is the best optic for snipers if you have it unlocked something i actually need to do uh, but otherwise the pinpoint one is really really nice and that is the kind of 8k that you want to be using so it's now time for the top two and in second place for the best mid to long range weapons in call of duty warzone we have the ram 7 and this is especially true for keyboard and mouse players the Ram 7 does take some getting used to. It's a weapon I'd say you need to use for a few days straight to really get the hang of the recoil to fully make up your mind on it. Because unlike most other assault rifles in Warzone, the Ram 7 kicks up and to the left rather than the right. So what your muscle memory that you've built up using other assault rifles, you need to actually reverse to consistently land your shots. It has that 556 damage profile of 42 to the head and 28 everywhere else, which then drops down to 34 and 23, but with a fire rate of 856 rounds per minute, which gives it an incredibly fast time to kill. And is one of the reasons that this is one of the best assault rifles in the entire game. But just remember, spend some time to allow yourself to get used to the recoil as the gun feels weird the first time you use it, but it'll be totally worth it in the long run. But this is the loadout that you're going to want for it. So here is the Ram 7, the monolithic suppressor, the FSS Ranger barrel on there. Uh, weirdly, it only has three barrels to choose from. This is the one that you want for Warzone. Uh, so you can keep that highest damage profile at the furthest distance as possible. The Commando foregrip, you don't want to penalize your aim down sight speed. Uh, and this is the only under barrel that's going to give you increased aiming stability and recoil stabilization without punishing your aim down sight speed. Because otherwise, the assault rifle feels really sluggish um, and in Warzone, which is a really fast paced shooter, you just do not want that. Then I go ahead and use the VLK three times optic for that mid to long range option. However, if you want to, you can go ahead and use like the Corp Combat Hollow and put a blue dot on it. Uh, if you're pairing it with a sniper and want to use it as a bit of a closer option, and you'll still be able to hit your targets at a distance. But that's the Ram 7 that I use. And of course, the best gun for mid to long range, even after the nerf, is the AMAX. There is just something about this gun that rewards skillful players. Even with the damage nerf, its time to kill is still very similar, just requiring one more bullet for a headshot kill than before. But mixing in body shots in there, it's still around the same as the chest damage output has not been changed. There's a reason this gun is used by every pro player in big money tournaments for mid to long range because it shreds. Now, if you're on console, I'll be honest with you, the visual bounce can be hard to deal with, which makes the recoil at times unmanageable at those long distances. But if you play on 120 FOV with effective field of view, it's actually super easy to use. And I've noticed a big difference in my ability to drop opponents at those further distances with ease. It has a fire rate of 630 rounds per minute, 51 damage for a headshot and 42 to the chest, and then 35 for extremities. But let's go ahead and check out the class setup that you want to be using for the King of Warzone.
And here we have it, the best assault rifle in Warzone with a monolithic suppressor, that XRK Zodiac barrel. We then have the Commando 4 grip with the 45 round mag and the VLK 3x optic. Now, I say this a lot, but if you really, really struggle with landing your shots with this thing, you can change that Commando 4 grip for the Ranger, though. Personally, I wouldn't recommend that. You don't want to punish your aim down sight speed. Uh, but if you run on 120 FOV affected, it's actually really really easy to use but there we have it those were the top seven mid to long range weapons in call of duty warzone i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you're going to be using down in the comments below and if you agree or disagree with my rankings and i'll see you next time for more call of duty warzone thanks for watching